Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Weekend Roundup. Today we're going to take a look at all the mods newly released in the Giants Mod Hub for the week of October 21 through October 25. This was a rather interesting week in the Giants Mod Hub. We had nearly 48 mods get released or updated. In fact, I believe the count is 45 mods were released or updated this week. And uh, let's just go ahead and jump over to the Mod Hub and just do a quick overview of the newly released and updated mods then we'll come back in game and do a much better analysis at each of the new mods so here we are over at the mod hub and the week started out with a pair of trailers by rb modding we have the vala crossetto nl28 and then just the crossetto nl28 trailers got released from rb modding we had a map update from Greenwich Valley, as well as the Crampy Bandit 800 trailer got updated. An Edinburgh, or Edinburgh Aerostar Exact 600. I believe this is a weeder. Yeah, this is a weeder. This got newly released this week, as well as the Omakra Forestry map was newly released this week. The Lily Tigro XR75, and then an IT Runner for silos pack got released this is a rather interesting mod it's kind of a pseudo placeable um pseudo trailer pack uh pseudo big bag pack we're going to take a look at that i think the mod pack has some interesting highlights but has a few little disappointments in my opinion also we had an update to the oberbach map and the rdc fs19 map uh, the Scarrock 4x4 pickup truck was updated this week. Now, this was a truck that came out in the Giants Mod Contest earlier this year for PC only. This update also brought to it console support. So now, console folks, got yourself a new pickup truck. We have the placeable water tower, as well as the fast coupler, coupler forks pack. Now, I will make note that this pack does require the triangle tractor pack also so if you haven't downloaded that make sure you go ahead and download that then we have the limpkin very opal 8 plow the global company hay dryer got updated this week and then we have a new tractor in town we have the mccormick c max 105 tractor this was released for pc only stubble cultivator which is kind of an interesting option it's a mod and a script, so of course you could take that script out and implement it in other ways. Uh, we have the pallet storage pack. This does require global company. We have the MZHT-16 tank. We have the MMZ-771B trailer pack. Then we jump over to page one. Continuing on page one. We have the Rabe Steiger series tractor got newly released. We've got updates for the placeable farm silo pack and the Case IH Puma CVX with TerraTrax. We have a new placeable farmhouse as well as placeable bunker silos. The Case Magnum IH US series was newly released. And the same day this happened, another tractor pack got newly released that the next day was taken out of the mod hub. I don't think anyone really knows exactly what happened to that. There is some speculation, but I don't want to talk about what's speculative until I have some more information at hand. Then we had a fleet of updates. We had the Pottinger Euroboss 330, Bison Z56 Cutter Trailer, the Case IH 7200 Series Tractor, and Ursus 904 Tractor got updated. We also had the Case IH 1030 Header get updated, and the Metal Tech PBD-8 trailer got updated. And we have the interesting Tuchel Sweep Plus 590. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. This is kind of an interesting mod. We're going to take a look at that. Here's some comments on that. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, we have an update to the Animal Pen Extension mod. And then five new Seasons Geos got released this week. We have the Seasons Geo for, um, yeah, I'm not really sure how to pronounce this at the moment. 
as well as that one. Those look to be maybe maybe Swedish in nature. So I'm going to have to have Google Translate help me that one out a little bit later. Let's get back on the same page. Then we have the Seasons Geo for Gieselberg. That is, of course, a map that is also out. Seasons Geo for Scotland and a Seasons Geo for Central Europe Simplified. It's kind of an interesting one. Then we have the SIP Orion 25 Manure Spreader, the Profi Flegel Front Packer, a pair of balers from the ARM team, John Deere 690, and the Crone Big Pack 1280 got released. And then we round out the week with the Brussel and Laud L35 Bucket. So while we're over here, let's go ahead and take a look at the daily testing thread. This was updated on Friday of this week, and you can see we have 133 mods pending testing and approximately 10 working days, or basically two weeks, if you will, from when a mod is submitted until it is released. We've got kind of a short list here as far as what's being tested. We still have the Hauer Snowpack and Seasons, and the Snowy Land Seasons Geo in testing for console. We've got uh, App Mini Brun is in testing for both PC and console, as well as a few other bots. So with that, let's go ahead and jump back into game and start taking a much closer look at all the mods newly released for this week from the Giants Mod Up for the week of October 21st to October 25th. Okay, first up, we're going to start with the vehicles and then move on to the implements, placeables, script mods, and then we will be done for this week. So first up, we have the McCormick C-Max 105 tractor. This mod is by Neverot, North Modding, IHC 533, and Hobby LS Modding. What an interesting set of names there, I must say. So we can find it here under small tractors. We have the McCormick C105 Max. This mod is for PC only. This tractor is 105 horsepower, 18 miles per hour top speed. Uh, base configuration, we're talking $39,500. We have configuration one, configuration two with the front weights. So we have basically no front weight or a front weight configuration. Then we have real brand Teleberg, Tre Trelleberg, oh, standard wheel weights, wide tires, wide with weights, narrow tires, rear twins, and back to standard. Then we have Michelin, wide tires. We also have, not sure what this is. Okay, we've got configuration with or without front fenders. There you go. Let's go ahead and lease this up. Lease cost is $2,014, $395 per day, and $829 per operating hour. So I'm surprised this doesn't come with a, with a front loader option. You have an animated foot throttle down there as well as brake. Like anything else, it's animated. Let's take a look at the lights. We do have a somewhat illuminated dash. The LED panels, and it looks like the gauges do light up on the inside. Let's take a look on the outside. First stage lights, second stage lights, and third stage. We have four ways, front and back, left and right. Brake lights have mouse controls, so right click up and down to open the back window. Left and right will open the driver's side door. Then if we hold the mouse button down, left and right, oh my gosh, that opens and closes the front window. 
leave the front window open and see how that affects visibility. Well, close that on up. We're going to make use of this particular tractor later on as we work with our attachments and implements. But I am a little surprised that it doesn't have a front loader option, uh, only because I was happened to be at a, a pumpkin patch uh, for one of my kids' uh, field trips, and uh, one of the tractors they were using to basically haul people around on... Um, on wagons was a McCormick tractor. Couldn't see the model number because it had a front loader attacher on it and the front loader arms were basically positioned in such a way that the model information was obscured. But uh, yeah, that was kind of interesting. Next up we have the Raba Steiger series tractor by Mr. Dynamite or Dynamite 88 and Thorasi. Uh, this mod is also available for PC only. Go to large tractors. Scrolling over here, we have the Raba Steiger, $110,000 as configured. Let's see, we have a choice of color options between yellow or green, rim color between white or black, and design color between white and yellow. We have design standard, decal one. Decal 2, standard, we have Raba Steiger, Raba there, decal 1, we change the hood, and then decal 2, we go back to a different hood, and we lose the branding on the side, and we just get these three stripes. Your engine setup, we have the D2156 MT6, 245 horsepower. We have the D2156 MTK L16 Vol 1, 250 horsepower, DL11 D11TL, 280 horsepower, and then we max out at the D10 TLL235 at 320 horsepower. We have the wheel setup of standard, double wheels, broad wheels, and back to standard. So as configured, we have $122,000 purchase price, $6,222 to lease, $1,220 per day, $2,562 per operating hour. Take a little bit closer look at this. Cows look pretty good. Oh, listen to this thing. Wow. You have illuminated dash. Have anything animated in here? So we have an animated foot throttle. Gauges. Brick is animated. Doesn't look like we have any sort of beacon or indicator. Indicators are light indicators inside. Take a look. Lights. First stage lights. Second stage lights. And the third stage lights. We saw earlier we do have our beacons. Front and the rear. Left and right. Brakes. We have an animated drive shaft. You can see here. You can see the knuckle down there at the base of the front differential. Uh, transfer. Transfer case or what that really is. That's animated. like when it turns it shifts it's not quite lining up but that's okay let's listen to this thing shut down and then restart it this thing sounds like a beast you have an animated exhaust clapper that's pretty cool 
Let's this thing start up. Wow, that sounds that sounds nice. I like that. So there you go, that is the Raba Steiger series. That mod is available for PC only. Oh, we do have a door that animates when you get in and out. That's that. Nice little touch. The next up we have the Case IH Magnum US series by Carl Farms. This mod is available for all platforms. I'm gonna find this tractor also under large tractors. We have the Case Magnum US series, two hundred and sixty thousand dollars, three hundred twenty horsepower and thirty one mile per hour top speed. This is the U.S. series, so we don't have the EU warning signs on this thing. So we've got extended axles, so we can put on extra wheels. Let's go ahead and see all the configuration options. So we have Trelleberg in standard, wheel weights, wide tires, twin wheels all around, rear twins, brawler track on the rear, 30-inch row crop, tires then we have 36 inch row crop tires shift it out a little bit 30 inch row crops with weights 36 inch row crop with weights 30 inch dual row crops 36 inch dual rear row crops 30 inch row crop back dual I thought we were already there or is that with weights Yeah, 30, 30 inch row crop dual with front and rear. 36 inch row crop dual front and rear. 30 inch row crop dual with weights. 36 inch row crop dual with weights. Narrow tires, narrows with weights. Rear twin narrows, narrow twin all around. Crawler track with dual front narrow twin. Then crawler track in general. Row track. That. Row track duels. Quad track. Quad track wide. And back to standard. Oh my gosh. And we have Michelin. Standard. Standard with weights. Wide with weights. Twin wheels. Rear twin. Oh my gosh. The 1040R32. I mean, these are some serious floaters. Floaters with weights. 30 inch row crops. 36 inch row crops. Row crops with wheels. Weights. 36 inch row crop with weights. I think you guys kind of see the trend here. There are crazy amounts of tire configurations available in both tire brands. Then we have design standard, front attachment, weight rack, 600 pound weights, 1800 pound weights, back to standard. Then we have front fenders, standard are no fenders. We have attachers, standard, or quick hitch. There we have our standard. We have the quick hitch option. Then we have the engine, 250 CVT, 280 CVT at 350 horsepower, 340 CVT at 410 horsepower, 380, 435 horsepower, and back to the 250 at 320 horsepower. Then we have flashers in standard, or no side flashers. Let's go back with that. So as configured at 435 horsepower, just standard tires with fenders. We are $335,000, $17,090 the lease, $3,351 per day, and $7,037 per operating hour.
got an animated steering wheel that folds down. We've got some interesting lights on the pillar. Start it up. The indicator lights on the pillar. Or beacons, or flashers, left and right blinkers for all of our lights. First stage, second stage, and third stage lights. So it's pretty cool. The animated hand throttle and foot throttle. Animated direction lever. Animated brakes. You have mouse controls. Right click, up and down, opens and closes the front door. X to unfold the tractor. Flashers that then fold down. Take a look at these lights. First stage lights, second stage lights, and then third stage lights. A pair of beacons on top. Alternate between the two. The brick lights. Cool chest on the front. Box. Pretty cool looking tractor. Again, that's the Case IH Magnum series by Carl Farms, and it is available for all platforms. Up next, we have the Fast Coupler Forks Pack by Fabian and GoGo -Go Bear. Uh, this mod does re have a mod requirement. As I said in the intro, it does require the tractor triangle pack by gamer8250 this mod is available for all platforms so what we're going to do is we're going to find these here under bailing technologies and we have the bail fork we basically have three bail forks we have the dusseldorf bail fork a lizard bail fork and a lizard round fork Take a look at that. So the bail fork, the Dusseldorf bail fork, we can change the design color, which is the spikes, and then the main color, which is the body of the uh, of the mod. Design one, design two. Basically, we're just changing the material of this little clip-looking thing. They're painted or bare metallic. Three hundred ten dollars to buy. $15 to lease, $3 per day, and $6 per operating hour. We have the Lizard Bale Fork, which also has the design color of the spikes, main color of body, $210 to buy, $10 to lease, $2 per day, and $4 per operating hour. And then we have the Round Bale Fork by Lizard. We have the ability to change the main color on that changes everything and it is $450 to buy, $22 to lease, four per day and nine per operating hour. And then we basically need to get fast coupler, the triangle pack. Not really sure, let's see where that might be. It's been quite a while since I did that video and you know what? completely lost track as to where that might be. So let me go figure out where in the heck that is located and I'll be right back with you. All right, so I have found it. It's under weights. So we go to tools and then weights. Yes, because most of the quick connector triangles are weights at least with the pack that it came out with. So we have two tractor triangles in here. We've got one, and we've got the other one. Honestly, I'm not really sure what differences are on that one, but at any rate, they are $550 to buy, $20 to lease, $5 per day, and $11 per operating hour. Change the main color on this to any color, should we so wish. Let's go ahead and basically get a tractor and uh, show you guys basically how these work.
since none of these seem to have front three points. Let's just use the McCormick on the rear. Connect, quick connect triangle first. Then we'll come back up here. Then we'll be able to basically connect onto that triangle. Then this quick connect bail fork. Dusseldorf X unfolds the bail fork. And X folds it back up. So, now in the game, pretty much all of this stuff is quick connect. So in real life, I can see this having a bit more usefulness, obviously, because the way this works is you just kind of come up underneath these forks and basically slide it down over the triangle and latch it in place. But on this game, it's just one quick button. This one doesn't fold. It's really whatever uh, y'all want to use. But if, uh, if you want that kind of additional level of um, simulation, I guess then you could get to the quick connect triangle trailer tractor triangle pack. Sorry, I'm having a problem with the name on that. And then get the fast coupler forks. In addition to that, then uh, you'll be all set. Go. So again, this mod is by Fabian and Go Go Bear, and is available for all platforms. And up next we have the Tuchel Sweep Plus 590 by Creative Mesh and Wopster. Uh, this is kind of an interesting mod. It is available for all platforms. And we're going to find this under Tools and then Miscellaneous. Two different variants. One for a telehandler. One for a front loader. Basically what this is, is a sweeper, if you will. I you to clean up all kinds of things, clean up animal debris, basically clean up uh, the roads or the farmyard, basically scrub up uh, tractor marks, everything. And then there is this side brush, kind of get in there and get everything that it can't reach. The side brush basically brushes things out more toward the middle here, uh, where then you can easily pick up with the main brush. So this has a 280 liter storage capacity, so it either is a small storage capacity in this 93 horsepower 2.3 meter working width and six mile per hour top speed the way this works is basically the things that it picks up it will then convert to manure then you'll basically have to unload the manure once it's once it's basically full i kind of like this concept and this idea Currently doing multiplayer on a map where you basically go on a sheep farm, and the sheep farm basically has manure uh, as the food dirt aspect. Interesting. There is a bit of a a delay. See how this attaches? It's kind of free floating there like to see that a bit more um, a bit more attached if you will to the uh, to the telehandler Let's fold it up Let's fold up that brush turn it on animation there if we throw this down kind of engages also back up Interesting set of materials. Raise tilted obviously with the telehandler. 
that. So let's go see how this thing kind of works. Go over here and make a little bit of a mess. Let's, uh, let's tip the ground. Let's just tip the ground some corn. Okay, so there we got a little bit of corn on the ground. Let's first fold this and just see how that works. Let's come up here and just kind of grab just a little bit of this. See how it's kicking it over to the side. The brush is picking it up. And we basically have 93 liters of manure now. Let's fold this brush up. Interesting. We cleared out a thousand liters of cleared out a thousand liters of corn, and we only have 257 liters of manure. Then basically unload it. Yeah, now we have a little piece of manure. So there comes in two different variants. We've got the Telehandler variant, telehandler connector, and then a front loader variant. Sorry, that is a three point hitch variant. Let's take a look at that one. Also, because I kind of think the telehandler is a little wonky. The way it's uh, kind of bobs and ups, up and down on that attaching joint. Let's get our McCormick again. Let's go over here and let's just scoop up that 257 liters of manure and see if we lose product again. Scrubbing away the tire tracks. I think that was kind of a fluke of how we had that thing connected. So we have 279 liters of manure for some load. So that is again the Sweep Plus 590 by Creative Mesh and Wapster. Back this up. Disconnected. You'll see we got a little leg that comes up. All right. Next up we have the. Profi Flegal Front Packer. This mod is by Rick Black Label TWD Modding and Gamer8250. This mod is available for all platforms. I'm going to find it here under Disc Heroes. We have the Flegal Front Packer, $5,200 to buy, 3 meter working width, 10 mile per hour top speed. $265 at least, $52 per, per day, and $109 per operating hour. Has a 60 horsepower requirement. Let's go ahead and get a tractor here with a front three point. Let's see how this thing works. Now, this also. 
according to the mod description, requires the triangle pack. Now, it doesn't have it listed, though, in the required mods section of the mod listing. So that is kind of interesting. Up to this, back to it. And of course, this is designed as a cultivator. This Caro action, three meter working with, which makes it perfect for a three meter non direct drill cedar or planter. Basically, use this in front and then have a three meter cedar or planter behind you. And you'll then be able to basically cultivate the ground and at the same time plant in one pass. Let's lower this. Off we go. It's nothing we need to turn on. Basically just need to lower the triangle. The act of lowering the tractor triangle goes off and it does its thing. Guys, that is the Profi Flegal Front Packer by Rick Black label TWD Gaming or Modding and Gamer8250. It is available for all platforms. Next up, we have the Inbrock Aerostar Exact 600 by Agritechnic Norfile. This is a meter, so if we go here to Tools and then Meters. There they are. There's the weeders. We have the Edinbrock Aerostar Exacta 600, 7 mile per hour working speed, 60 miles per hour, 6 meter working width. $7,500, $382 lease, $75 per day, and $157 per operating hour. Back in on Cormac. We have hose connections, which is good to see. Electrical. Let's head on back down to our test field. See if I can't get that field to uh, have some early weeds in it. And then we'll give this thing a drag through those weeds. See what it looks like. There we go. Now we have ourselves a field with some weeds in it. Pop it down and just give it a good drag to the weeds. That's some working behavior. Then we have tines in there in behind the wheels. Even though the wheels are behind all those other tines, it's kind of an interesting setup. Decals on this mod look really good. Materials, the textures, everything looks really, really nice on this. There you go, that is the Aerostar Exact 600 by Agritechnic Norfile. And again, that mod is available for all platforms. All right, next up we have the Limpkin Very Opal 8. This is a plow by STV Modding and is available for all platforms. Here under plows, we have the Limpkin Vari Opal 8, $25,200, 9 per hour, 9 mile per hour working weed, working speed, 3 meter working width, 
180 horsepower. Let's compare that to got the Agrimaz POH5, 2.5 meter working with 150 horsepower. Then we bump up to the 4.9 meter Lemkin plow at 300 horsepower. You have choice of rim color, red or black. That is about it. So $1,285 to lease, $252 per day, and $529 per operating hour. Let's go ahead and get our Raba Steiger and use that one for this particular test. This is a reversing plow. Six bottom plow, it looks like. Let's head on down again to our test field and give this thing a drag through the dirt. See what it looks like. I'll meet you guys down there because this tractor, well, she's a bit slow. All right, guys, welcome back. Get it down here. Take a look here. We can be turned plow. Drop down and give her a drag through the ground. Overall, looks real good. Particle effects, dust, dirt, and everything. Up, around. Back down. Off we go. Alright guys, so that is the Lipkin Very Opal 8 by STV Modding. Up next we have the SIP Orion 25. This is a small manure spreader by BGamer003. This mod is for PC only. So if we go to tools and then manure spreaders. So the current smallest manure spreader is the FarmTech Superfex. I think that's Superflex, but it's Superfex 800 for 10,500 liters. Here is the SIP Orion 25 with 8,000 liter capacity, 35 horsepower, and 9 meter working width. Now, interesting enough, it has a fill type of all of the standard in-game fill types on the map, all the crops and everything, whereas the Stratoman is just manure only, but this may be configurable to also act as a trailer. Let's take a look at that. So we've got the SIP manure spreader here. I like the... Uh, the wood everywhere, change it from standard to trailer. So in the trailer configuration, then it still holds or still lists at 8,000 liters. 4,000 liters on the manure spreader or 8,000 liters on the trailer. So that is kind of an interesting deal. So $8,000 for either configuration, $401 or $408 to lease. 80 per day and $168 operating hour. So we get we got the trailer on that configuration. Let's go ahead and the manure spreader. Take a look at these two. Go back and get our McCormick. Look. Do have a power hookup for the lights on the rear. Looks like this is going to tip. This has got a movable floor. 
moving floor, walking floor, whatever you want to call it. So let's see how it unloads. Floor opens up and then the walking floor moves. Okay. Let's go here and see how the manure spreader looks. Goes up pretty quick. Heaped up fairly well there. Let's go up here to this field this time. Don't, it doesn't look like we have to unfold it, we just turn it on and off. Perfect for that really small farm. Of course, we're not showing that we need anything over here because well, this field probably is already at three stages of fertilization. Not showing anything, but there you can see the overall working width of the pod. As that is the SIP Orion 25, again by BGamer003. And it is available for PC only. Up next, we have the John Deere 690 baler by the ARM team. So let's go ahead and get that pulled up. Probably not have to use the bigger tractor for that one. We're going to find this here under baling technologies. We have the John Deere 690, $12,000, 4,000 liter capacity, 12 mile power working width, and just 115 horsepower required. So I guess technically we could use the, uh, the McCormick there, standard wheels, colored front wheels, colored back wheels are standard. So that's kind of odd that you would want to have that configuration. At any rate. $612 to lease, $120 per day, and $252 per operating hour. Now we have another mod that is also by the mod team, ARM, the mod ARM, uh, by the mod author ARM team. Oh my gosh, I'm just completely losing it today. At any rate, it is the Crone Big Pack 1280, kind of the Crone variant of the John Deere Baylor. Has all of the same specs. Again, we have standard, colored front, colored back, back to standard. Go ahead and take a look at both of these at the same time. And these mods are available for all platforms. Say the decals on these are a little low res, a little disappointed on that. There's that there where it's supposed to be some bolts, that's just some fuzzy texturing there. Really seems like this might be a convert. Gauge is kind of octagonal shaped, not circular. Clearly, not a very clear gauge on that. Then the fire extinguisher is just. I mean, just a totally different level. Um, pretty far distance, it looks pretty good, but up close, it really doesn't hold much muster.
We also don't have any sort of hose hookups on this. What hoses that you would have on a baler, but at any rate. Some more looks there. Theoretically, theoretically there would be, need to be some way of getting that up and down, right? Instead of running two different balers for two different tests, it's basically the same baler with different skin. There's times like this where you kind of wonder why didn't we just why didn't it just release one mod with two different configuration options as opposed to multiple mods? on. So we've got a nice animated PTO there. Decent animations on the baler itself. It does appear to make standard Square bales. Go. Yeah. Later, four thousand liter square bale. So that is the John Deere six ninety and the Prone Big Pack one twenty eighty. 120-80 by ARM team and is available for both of those are available for all platforms. All right next up we have the the Vala Avaya uh, uh, Crossetto NL28 by RB Modding and while we're looking at that we're going to look at the other trailer we have a Crossetto NL28 trailer also by RB Modding. Both of those trailers are available for PC only. So if we take a look at those, we're going to find them here under Tools and then Trailers. We have the Presetto NL28, and then we have the, the Vala Va, Via NL28, $40,000, $28,400. Thousand liters. Now on the Vala one, we have the choice of main color. Pretty bright colors there. Choice of rim color. We have the capacity twenty-four thousand liters or forty-six thousand liters. And we have design color or white. And then we have the Crescetto branded NL28. We have a choice of main color, some different colors there. Design color, which is the door on the back. And the rim color, capacity 24,000 liters or 46,000 liters. And design of either color or white. So as configured, $2,616 to lease. 513 per day and 1077 per operating hour. The trailer is basically it's the same trailer, just two different brandings on it. because of the tractor there we didn't have the hose connections it's a different tractor you just validate that so 
you know, we definitely have hose connections now, although where they're going. Assume that's a problem with the if that's a problem with the tractor or if that's a problem with the trailer. Let's go get the third tractor and see what happens. These are hooked up a lot better, so it must be a problem with the hose connections on that tractor are not configured right. I know that this trailer is vastly under oversized for the tractor here, but let's go over here to look at the unload options. So when we do a force unload, the rear gate opens up only once it's fully open. We get freezing action on the bed. I have no doubts that the other trailer is going to basically operate the exact same way. Two nice looking decals on this. We have an animation on the little locking clip. Cool. Alright guys, so again that is the Crosetto NL28 and the Vala, the Via Crosetto NL28. Both of these trailers are by RB Modding and they are both available for PC only. Next up we have the MZHT16. This is a slurry applicator by FSSA Modding Team. It is also available for just PC. So if you go to Slurry Tanks, have the MZHT16, $12,400 to buy, 10 meter working width, and 17,200 liter capacity. What an interesting trailer here. So we've got kind of a dolly trailer action, front axle, rear Twin rear axle, Russian styled yes, slurry applicator, change the color wing, changes the hose attachment there, frame the fenders, paint color. Changes the tank frame itself there, change the rim color, and then we can change the color of the labels to a yellow or a white. Interesting how that looks. It looks like it's kind of chiseled into the uh, the tank there. We'll have to take a look at that close. We have design standard. Remove the wing. Moving the wing basically removes the fenders. Number standard two. There's a number on it. Two, three, four. Give her, give her logos. Now that the tank seems to move, slide forward when I change it. Then we have a wheel setup. MMZ wheels. MC and Belshina are Belshina everywhere. Let's go ahead and lease this. $642 to lease, $126 per day, and $264 per operating hour. Wow. 
really just need to stop trying to use that particular tractor. Pretty short toggle on that. Yeah, hose is going weird, weird locations on this particular mod. Left click, we can raise and lower the boom. Up and down, left and right, rotates the boom out. Tractor is the right mouse button. Supposed to sit in that. This is supposed to sit on top of that little carrier. So. Okay, so we can unfold it, we unfold it, raises it up a little bit, moves it out, put it back, unfold it, place it back down in position. I don't have, I uh, can't fill this up with slurry, I'm just going to have to pretend how it works. Quite an interesting slurry tank. Indeed. Let's take a look at these decal textures. Okay, so not chiseled in, they're just kind of painted on. There you go, that is the MZHT. 16 by FSSA Modding, and then we have a second mod by FSSA Modding. It is the MMZ771B trailer. So if we go back to tools and then trailers again, we have the MMZ771B. So we've got the trailer, and then we have a platform. So we change the color of the frame. There we can change the rim colors. And we can change the body color. So we have the configuration of platform. Bail platform. Go to the design standard. Remove. The spare tire, the number plate, or we can remove the number plate. Wheel setup MMZ are the Belshina trailers. Wheels, these. Then let's get the MMZ 771B trailer. This is another one of those dual compartment trailers. I've seen one of these, I believe, from the FSSA modding team. Different brand, model, frame color, body color, just a tipping bodies, wood color, rim color, our labels. So we'll change the wood color here in a bit. Capacity 9,000 liters. 13,000 liters, 20,000 liters, go to 20,000 liters, we have the wood color, we can change the color of the wood on that batting, design standard or remove the spare, we can remove the number plate or add it and basically we can change it from 
wood to old wood to a grid back to wood and we have the MMZ wheels are the Belshina wheels so as configured we're looking at $8,055 to buy $410 to lease 80 per day and $169 per operating hour That is an interesting bale trailer. Let's cut to that. Really a short, short tongue on that. Very, very short tongue. That thing needs to be lengthened a bit. It's going to be very, very hard to make any real turns with this. At least some of the uh, trailer is without collision. Oh, that thing is ridiculously short. That is all the controls. It's fancy. We do have a rear hitch, so I assume that we can go ahead and connect this other trailer. I'd say, I think with such a rear, which is with uh, with such a short, the hitch is just decorational. With such a sh with such a short tongue on that, it's going to be kind of difficult to, uh, to maneuver around. It seems to be the major shortcoming, I think, of this particular trailer. This trailer we have tip side front left, tip side back left, front right, and back right. So we have again two completely separate containers, two different fill types. Wood chips. Ten thousand meters of chaff. See in this configuration, we hold kind of the forage fill types. Whereas in the other configuration, it is going to probably hold more of the traditional grain fill types. As that is the MMZ. 771B trailer by FSSA Lottie. Next up we have the Lily Tigro XR75 by ETA La a Choice. This mod is available for all platforms. So if we once again go to Auger Wagons, it says Website says auger wagons. Clearly, that is wrong. Find that here under trailers, right? No. Auger wagons. It's not even there. All right. Let me make sure that I actually have this thing activated. Let's look here under Lily Brand. Where is this forage wagons? Go to loading wagons. We have the Lily Tigro XR75. This has a storage capacity of 42,000 liters, 200 horsepower requirement, 12 mile per hour top speed. We have a choice of Trulliberg tires or Michelin. We have Michelin standard or wide tires. This is $124,000 to buy, 
$6,324 lease, $1,240 per day, and $2,604 per operating hour. Go. Just gonna unfold that down, turn it on. Obviously, it starts to pick up our straw, grass, hay, whatever we have laying on the ground. Let's see what the unload animation looks like. We have a moving floor, got some beater bars that I call them, and then the rear gate lifts up. So, so there you go guys, that is the Lily Tigro, a Tigro XR75 by uh, ETA Lama Choice, and it is available for all platforms. And the last thing we're going to take a look at before we start looking at the scripts or placeables is the IT Runner for Silos by DD Mod Passion. So what this has with it is it comes with a IT runner trailer. Okay. It's a custom IT runner trailer for silos. Choice of main color there. Trailer tires. Michelin tires. So that is $56,500 by that or $2,881 to lease. Five sixty-five per day and one thousand one hundred eighty-six dollars per operating hour. Then we need to go over here to big bags, and then we have our choice of silos. So here we have a empty silo that will hold twenty-five thousand liters and hold pretty much all of our fill types. We have a silo for chickens, fertilizer, horse feed, lime, pig food, seed. Okay, so let's go over here to, let's take a look here at, I guess, silo for pig food. So the pig food silo is $20,000. They are all $20,000 other than empty silo. Let's get the pig food, buy that. Let's see how it just spawns in here. This map, it actually spawns in kind of a at a difficult to get to area. The reason this is kind of a custom IT runner trailer is because of how it extends. Basically, it extends vertically, and then that's where it ends. What it's designed to do is basically. Attached to the top of this silo. That, then once we attach to it, toggle back to our trailer. We hit X to basically fold it back down. And now that we are folded it down, we can transport this wherever we want. Let's just set it up over here. This is a matter of recourse. Drop it off. 
And if we look at the triggers on this, you're going to see that we basically have a fill trigger, then we have a little trigger, kind of around the silo itself. Uh, in the intro, I kind of mentioned that we would talk a little bit about some of the interesting things about this mod and a little bit of the disappointments. Let's talk about the disappointment. Is that I think this was a perfect opportunity for a sort of mobile um, silo that you can literally place anywhere, pick it up, move it. But what we really get out of this mod is a 25,000 liter big bag. So when this is emptied, the silo just vanishes. But we don't have the ability of buying a pig food silo like this, transporting it to the pig farm, and basically using pig food out of this, and then when it's empty, bringing pig food to it and filling it back up. Uh, instead, we're paying 50, what, 50, how much? $58,000, $55,000 for the special trailer, $55,000 for the trailer. Then we're spending $20,000 for the pig food. So that's $75,000 we have now invested to get one container of pig food of 25,000 liters. It seems awful expensive. Now, of course, the $55,000 investment can go a little bit further because of course we could use it for other things like a fertilizer silo or a seed silo. But again, when that silo is emptied, it just vanishes. Well, let's take a look at one more of these silos. Let's take a look at this one here. This is the one that is just general purpose silo. Take a look at the triggers. So once again, the triggers, we just have an empty trigger. And then we have a trigger kind of around the square of the whole silo. Something else, so another downfall of this is unlike a placeable where you place it in the ground. Place it and then it's there. You bump into it it's not going anywhere with this if you bump into it it's going to go somewhere because it's it's just sitting on the ground it's not actually firmly planted or anything so this one you see starts out empty question is can we fill it with anything how do we put product in it Tilt it up. Does empty awful slow too. So let's just pull out of here. So you can basically do we get an unload option? Back this up anywhere. Pull up alongside it. Get any sort of unload option. I wonder how do we get product in it well I think we basically need a fill silo or we might be able to bring that silo underneath a farm silo then we get the option to put product in it
Let's get this position better. See this completely empty? And it would just vanish away. this down I'm gonna try to keep that pig food silo in the camera up oh, there you see it just, just poof went away now if we pull up next to this we have the ability to fill it product put manure in it Now we have a silo with 25,000 liters of manure. Then place somewhere. Really have a, the sense that this is kind of a missed opportunity. Something that could be really good, really interesting, really exciting, in my opinion. That would be a refillable silo system that was movable around. So, you know, we've got we've got placeable fillable silos. Um, but you know what's a lot cheaper than 75,000 liters of pig food that vanishes after one use? Well, buying an auger wagon and putting pig food in it, having an auger wagon that will take pig food, or, or just, for example, oats, or horses, put 20,000 liters of oats in this auger wagon, and you've basically spent the same amount of money, but when it's empty of oats, you can actually make use of it. It doesn't vanish or disappear. So that is kind of the, the one thing that I really think is lacking with the IT Runner for Silos mod. So again, that is by DD Mod Passion and is available for all platforms. So guys, that is going to conclude our implements and tools section of this video. We're going to go and run up to our placeable section where we're going to go and talk about the placeables that were released newly this week. All right, first up in our placeables category, we have the placeable water tower by GamerHZS. This mod is available for all platforms. So we're going to find it here under placeables and then miscellaneous. $2,000 and oh my gosh, this thing is huge. So it rotates on its center. Go down. But oh my goodness. This isn't just a water tower. This is a monstrosity. This thing is... Absolutely massive bolts on that thing. And basically, this is a placeable water trigger at this point. So now we can come up here if we want and fill up a water trailer. But look at that. Look at the shadow that thing casts. I mean, that is just... Let's get this little tractor just as a, a frame of reference to that shadow. Massive. Fleet with some microwave antennas and transmitters up there. Pretty cool. Alright. Next up, we have the pallet storage pack. Now, this pack does have a prerequisite. Uh, you need to have the global company mod installed for this pack. Go to placeables and then global company. See, we have storage for chicken food, horse food pig food, liquid fertilizer, 
herbicide, lime, seed storage, and then fertilizer again. So we have fertilizer, seed, lime, herbicide, liquid fertilizer. Okay, so we have liquid fertilizer. We've got everything there. So here we can store wheat or barley. Let's go here and make sure that's checked. Chicken food storage, horse food, pig food, liquid fertilizer, herbicide, lime storage. Seed storage, and solid fertilizer storage. Let's go over here and take a look at these in a little bit more detail. So we have chicken food. Come in here, we can tip chicken food into here, get our chicken food out, and we also have the ability to do chicken food pellets. So let's go to Global Company, fertilizer, seed, lime, herbicide, some language entry or something here. So here we have the chicken storage, wheat or barley in. And then we get wheat out. 120,000 liter storage capacity. Let's see here. Let's, let's use this. Let's see. Can't spawn cheat that in. But the way this basically works is we can either dump raw wheat or barley in and put chicken food pallets in here then pull out and then pull out either pallets or raw material for chicken food horse food pig food store liquid fertilizer here and then we can either pull that out via a tank or we could pull out pallets of liquid fertilizer, herbicide, lime, seed, and solid fertilizer all the same way. So that is the pallet storage pack by Zoodle Zocket and it is available for PC only. Next up we have the farmhouse, the 1950s farmhouse. I'm going to move this tractor. I'm going to put the farmhouse on that shadow. See if it obscures the entire house. So this farmhouse is by DMI 20mm Ormody and is available for all platforms. It's going to be pretty much obscure all of the house. Let's go ahead and put that down. Rotates on its center. And there we go. We have pretty much the entire house being in shadow from that water tank. Let's walk up here. We have our sleep trigger. Pretty nice textures on this. Price is two hundred thousand dollars. And if you're looking for a you know a decent option or a farmhouse that is a little bit different uh, but still kind of classy well you've got this one 1950s farmhouse by dmi 20 mm normandy up next we have the bunker silo ma7 pack uh, it is available for all platforms also and is by ma7 they're placeables and then silos have a small bunker silo 
little bunker silo and a big bunker silo. This rotates. I have to keep hitting the button to rotate this. It doesn't smoothly rotate. It does rotate a full 360 degrees, but you have to basically hit that button a whole lot of times to get it to rotate that much. Medium bunker silo, which is just a two sided silo, whereas the small one was three. Big bunker silo. Oops. Let's double tap that. There we go. This silo is kind of an interesting setup. We've got lines here, kind of stain lines, where we've seen. The, uh, the chaff previously We've got model tarps of a various worn nature also on this. Some holes there. Not sure what that's for unless that's to kind of help hold down tarp or something. See the chaff trigger. Double trigger. Chaff trigger for that one. And then the large one. That's a chaff trigger for that one. Not going to go to the effort of actually filling these or anything. There you go. That is the Bunker Silo MA7 by Mod Author MA7 and is available for all platforms. Now the last thing we're going to look at in game here is the stubble cultivator. This appears to be a global specialization added to all cultivators or sewing machines. So I think in the intro I said that this was a cultivator mod that you could also then basically make use of that in other mods. Basically this appears to just be a cultivator globalization so let's get a cultivator here and let's get a cedar you can even see that so let's get the stara a cedar that has direct planting capability Slow. Go ahead and get this. It's going to be a little bit of overkill for our cultivator. What this does is it basically takes a harvested stubble texture and when you cultivate it, it basically puts down a um, chopped straw texture on the field as opposed to the normal cultivated texture. Pull up the F1 menu, you can see that we have the option of activate stubble cultivator. Here we are, I've got a little bit of a harvested field. Let's just drop this down. Normal. Okay, so you see how it works normal. Now let's go left control S and we'll convert this to a stubble cultivator. You can see now we are leaving the chopped straw texture, basically cultivating the field and leaving a chopped straw texture behind. And if we look at the See where cultivating that whole path is cultivated, okay? But the very first part of that path was with the stubble cultivation deactivated. So let's uh, let's turn the stubble cultivation off and make a second pass. 
This will be an option to any cultivator in game. See, both of those passes are the same. As far as the game is concerned, both of those are cultivated. It's just one is leaving a chopped straw, cultivated texture, if you will. The other is leaving the traditional, normal textured cultivation texture. Let's go up and basically get the cedar then. We come down here and see what it does with a cedar. I think it's a very special uh, characterization of player that would appreciate this mod. Of course, to some degree, when you are cultivating after harvest and you have some plant material on the ground, wouldn't expect the material to be completely broken up to the point where you wouldn't see it at all. Which is kind of what the default cultivation texture does. Expect to see some of that plant material. I'm thinking maybe the chopped straw texture might be a little bit a little bit much. I think you wouldn't have such a heavy top coat once you work it into the ground with the cultivator. Maybe some sort of happy medium blending of the two. So here we have a direct drill cedar. On. Seeding right away. Cultivation. So cultivate texture, we just have a seeded texture. The stubble is gone. Okay, now well, you can also left control S. You can activate the chopped straw on the cedar. And now what we get is we get a completely different texture. We still have seeded field, you can see down there in the info screen. We still have a wheat that is growing but we now have a chopped straw texture on top of the ground, similar to the chopped straw texture that we had on top of the cultivated ground. Continue on this path. See, we are continuing to use seed. And to get the growing on the PDA, and basically we're putting wheat back in the wheat so we don't see that change at all. Go left control S again, basically turn that off, and then we're back to our normal texture. So, guys, that is the stubble cultivator mod by Yumi, and it is available for PC only. So guys, up next we're going to bust out of the game, we're going to jump into the video editor, and we're going to do side-by-side -side comparisons of the five seasons geos that got released this week, and basically compare each geo to the standard in-game, in-mod base geo of seasons. So guys, our up next... <clears throat> So, first up, as far as the Seasons Geos are concerned, is the so Season Geo for Södermanland, Sweden. And if we compare that to the base Seasons Geo, which is in the upper left, and then we have the Sweden Geo in the lower right, we can see that overall most of our planting schedules for spring are shorter, specifically for wheat, barley, oats, and canola. Uh, we cannot plant those in early spring. Uh, then also we have a shorter uh, planting schedule for potatoes and sugar beets. Uh, this geo does not permit the use of cotton or sugar cane. Uh, if we look at the harvest schedules, for the most part they are about the same as the base season's geo, with the exception of potatoes and sugar beets. Looks like we have a slightly shorter 
harvest schedule for that. And as far as oats, we have a shorter planting schedule in autumn for that particular crop. Other than that, it looks to be fairly much on par with the standard seasons geo with respect to the planting and harvesting schedule. Of course, there is far more uh, in a geo than just simply when you can plant and when you can harvest. I suspect we're going to see much colder temperatures in this particular geo than we would with the standard geo. So for our second season's geo of the day, we have the John Zerpking Sweden geo. Now I've used Google Translate to try to help me there, but it just it's just it's not hearing. I'm not hearing it quite right. At any rate, this geo is very very slightly different from the first geo that we took a look at this week. Uh, it's got a slightly shorter autumn planting schedule for wheat and barley, basically the same as oats, and then a slightly shorter um, harvest schedule for sunflowers. Pushed it back a little bit, and it looks like the poplar planting schedule ends. I think with the previous Swedish Geo, we could plant poplar all the way up through the end of autumn, but with this particular version of the Swedish Geo uh, for this particular area, we have to move that back to the end of mid-autumn. Also, when I loaded this particular geo up, I got snow, ground, snow cover immediately, so I suspect this geo is going to have probably a higher chance of snow or maybe even colder temperatures than the first geo we took a look at. All right, so the next geo we're going to take a look at is the season's geo for Geiselberg or Geiselberg. Uh, this is by IRL Modding, and we have another cold climate geo here. I think we've got kind of a trend going on this week. So we have very short planting schedules in autumn for most of our crops. In fact, soybeans and corn we can only plant in early summer. All the other crops, for the most part, other than oilseed radish and poplar, we only can plant in mid-spring and late spring as far as an early spring planting. If you look at the harvest schedules, it looks pretty similar to the season, the standard seasons geo as far as harvesting goes for most of the crops, with the exception of corn and soybeans. It is a little shorter for that particular crop, and I think we're a little bit shorter for potatoes and sugar beets also. Now, if we look at our fall planting schedule, we can only plant our wheat, barley, oats, and canola from late summer, the start of late summer, to the end of late or mid-autumn, whereas the base season's geo lets us continue that planting all the way through the end of autumn. And we continue our cold trend with the Scotland geo uh, by IRL Modding. You can see that we still have very short times to plant our wheat and barley. Even shorter planting schedule for oats. We can only plant oats in late spring. And in fact, we can't do soybeans or corn. So cotton is out, soybeans are out, corn is out, and sugarcane is out if you do this particular geo. You'll see that we have one opportunity to put sunflowers in the ground, and that is late spring. Uh, oats, late spring, as I already said. Most of the other crops that we can plant, uh, we can plant in mid-autumn or mid-spring and late spring, and then we can also plant them starting the early parts of late summer all the way through the end of mid-autumn. Looking at the harvest schedules, other than a slightly shorter sunflower schedule and a slightly shorter potatoes and sugar beet schedule, the rest of the harvest schedules that we can plant uh, look to be about the same as the standard season's geo. So the last geo that we're going to take a look at today, and in fact the last mod we're going to take a look at today, is the Seasons Geo for Central Europe Simplified. And this one is quite an interesting geo. It kind of brings the, uh, the, the concept to me of, I want seasons, but I don't want all of the hard parts. Uh, so as you can see, the planting and harvesting schedules for pretty much all the crops is from early spring all the way to the end of of early winter. Uh, we can harvest oilseed, radish, and poplar all the way through the year from start to finish. Uh, we can plant cotton. We can indeed plant sugarcane 
and all of the germination temperatures are basically 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. Uh, the way it is set up according to the description is we have a little bit warmer um, autumn, a little bit milder summer, and the winters never get below freezing. Uh, so pretty much you are pretty much assured to be able to produce your crops as long as you don't do anything silly like try to plant them in the end of autumn or the end of winter. Uh, there are a few notes here on the description. Sugarcane does not regrow with this particular um, geo. All fruits that are still growing outlast the winter. Uh, there is no growth in winter. All ripe crops that are not harvested by the end of early winter will be um, basically go into a withered state. So it is kind of a rather interesting geo. Uh, makes lots of other changes. Uh, sales prices for loose straw and hay are increased. Uh, helping Helper hours are extended uh, from 6 o'clock until 10 or 9 o'clock as opposed to when they typically, typically go into overtime. Um, so basically this is a an interesting geo kind of simplifies, as it says in the description, kind of simplifies seasons uh, and really not having to worry about when you can plant and when you can harvest. Crops are still going to take a year to grow. It's not like you're going to be churning through crops you know, every two or three game days. It's just you don't have to worry about when you can plant what. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this weekend's weekend roundup. Uh, if you did, please go ahead and click that like button. Let me know in the comments what was your favorite mod released this week. And until next time, happy farming.